Friends, we have this very interesting contradiction in today's gospel reading. The Lord is speaking to his disciples and he's telling them about the sort of end he is going to have to meet. That the Son of Man will be handed over to men and that they will kill him and that this death the sacrifice will be necessary for him to continue his mission. But the disciples, the disciples are a little dense, and they're struggling to figure out what this means, and so they're having a completely different conversation. They're arguing about who is the most important of them all, who is the greatest, They want to know who has the most influence, who has the most power, who has the most authority among their friend set. And they seem to not be grasping that power and authority, influence and might have little to do with what God seeks of us and desires for us. In a lot of ways, their conversation is a very natural conversation for us as human beings. We want to know how much influence we can have. We want to know how important we are. We want to know how much or how consequential our lives are. In a lot of ways, our society tells us that those are the important things. And so today's readings invite us to consider a simple question. How is it that I define my success? What is it? What is it that offers me true and genuine peace and happiness and joy? It's actually four questions, but let's go with it. How is it that I define my success? Success in so many ways is the conversation that the disciples are having. We're told that success comes with how much money we make, what our title is, how much influence we have, how many people are in our chain of command. Success is being intelligent and smart and having access to any number of resources. And that the more success we have, the more authority we have, the more people who are willing to do our beck and call, that's what will make us happy. That's what will bring us joy. That's what makes us important and consequential people in this life. It's what we're told time and time again. But it's not what we're told by Christ. Because, friends, that definition of success those elements that make us happy, they will pass with the passing of this world. We can't bring them into the next life. But what Christ offers us, what God invites us to, is a peace and a happiness and a joy that transcend the stuff of this world and propel us into the eternal life of the kingdom that is to come. But the peace and the happiness that God offers won't pass when this world passes, but will come to its fullness when this world goes away, when Christ's kingdom comes into its fullness in the kingdom of heaven. And so we're invited to think about today how our life seeks to be defined by that notion of success. Do I define my success by my level of charity, my level of compassion, my level of care? Because as Christ reminds his disciples, as we're reminded by St. James in today's second reading, true and genuine life comes not with the stuff of this world, but comes in imitating the life of our Savior by offering ourselves in love and compassion and charity 
to our neighbor, to those in need, to those who struggle. Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. Friends, the analogy is potent because the point of receiving a child is the child can't pay you back for anything you give it. You offer it food and housing and shelter. Children take any number of our resources and none of it they can return. But that's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the sort of love that God has for us. And that's the sort of love that God invites us to each and every day. That's the sort of love that brings about in our life true, genuine, and authentic happiness and peace and joy. And so, friends, as we gather around this altar to receive the very goodness and sacrifice of our Lord in his body and blood, in his soul and divinity, the Lord asks us and invites us to consider this question. How is it? How is it that we seek success in the Christian life? How is it that we seek success in loving as Christ loves and living as Christ lived? How is it that we seek to use our gifts, our talents, our resources, our abilities, not just for our own glory, not just for our own fame, not just for our own notoriety, but in the service of our neighbor, in the service of the human family. And the Lord promises us he promises us that if we are willing to spend all on them, he will spend it all on us. He has spent it all on us. And will assure us life eternal in the kingdom to come. And so, friends, let us simply ask for the grace to be peaceable, to be gentle, to be loving and charitable to serve as Christ served so that we might share in his life, not only in this world, but in the world to come.